Hi, I'm Eric Huey. I'm the Senior Vice President of Government Affairs for the Entertainment Software Association. And I'm here with uh, Professor Joost Breitfeld from NYU, visiting professor, visiting scholar at NYU. And, thanks for having uh, me. You, thanks, thanks for coming in. We're really excited that you're, that you're here. And I want to talk a little bit about something that's near and dear to your heart, which is video games. Video games, I love them. So tell, tell, us, tell us what it is that you do, and then I want to ask a little bit about how you got into this. Okay, sure. Um, I'm currently an adjunct professor at NYU. Uh, I teach my own class about the industry analysis of the video game industry. Um, I also work as a researcher at NYU where I study the competition between video game publishers and video games, um, both in the setting of console video games as well as digital distribution. Um, and I have a background in the industry. I used to work for a developer and I did some consultancy all over Europe and now also in the US. What's your favorite video game? Oh, Zelda. Zelda. Yeah? Yeah. Every, every iteration of Zelda? Not necessarily every iteration. Uh, Wind Waker <laughs> is by far my favorite, followed by Ocarina of Time, and I'm very happy about the remake of Majora's Mask that they're, that they're putting out in about a few months' time. What, uh, what, uh, other than that, which upcoming IP are you most excited about coming out? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, so I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily um, tied to the trend, so I currently play a lot of Professor Layton. Um, you know, it's a professor, <laughs> solve, solve mysteries, something that I'd like to do myself. Um, I like the Mario games. I'm, I'm across the board, I'm a real Nintendo fan. Uh, so talk a little bit about your professorship. How did you get into this? I mean, how did you get into the academic study of uh, business models and business cycles? Of business yeah, yeah. Industry? So it's a funny story. So um, I used to be a rapper. And um, in my undergrads, all my assignments in uh, my, my business undergrads were about the music industry. Sure. And I was a little bit afraid that I would become this one-trick pony. And so um, transitioning into my master's, I thought, what other industry do I like? Yeah. And I played a lot of video games at the time. So I thought, let's study the video game industry. And then I was offered a job at the developer in the Netherlands. Really liked it. And it only made sense for me to keep working in the video game industry. I love the industry. It's this crazy dynamic between creativity and business acumen, um, and that makes for such a challenging uh, setting for publishers and, and platform owners to operate in. And I, I just want to know more about that. I want to understand every detail of it, and then be able to assist firms in making their decisions about business models, uh, engaging in competition, uh, what platforms to choose, you name it. You do a lot of econometric modeling, uh, analysis, analysis of, of, of huge data sets. That's right. Uh, uh, at, at, in your in your company. what sort of, as you as you thought about your PhD and as that gelled, what are the two or three uh, trend lines uh, or thesis uh, subpoints that, that that evolved out of that analysis? Okay, sure. Um, it's always difficult to distill five years of work into yeah. a few <laughs> seconds, but I'll try. Um, so first of all. Um, I study the dynamic between the platform and the competition between the video games. And what I find is that um, as platforms mature, the performance of video games first goes up as more people enter the platform that are very willing to buy a lot of video games. But then later on, on average, the performance of video games kind of goes down. Why? Because more kind of risk-averse consumers enter the platform and they're faced with many more options. And so even though a publisher is facing a larger user base, uh, on average, the performance kind of goes down. So that's the first main takeaway of the thesis. This does not apply to all video games equally. Mm -hmm. um, what I find is that um, towards the tail end of the platform lifecycle, the hits become bigger. And this is something that we saw, for example, with Grand Theft Auto V. Um, first week sales in the UK of Grand Theft Auto V were bigger than the first week sales of six of the other number one properties in the market combined. Right, so there's this downward sloping trend, but it doesn't necessarily apply to the to the top uh, the top options in the market. What have you found out about publishers? Are publishers necessary? If you if you whether you're a uh, uh, somebody in your garage coming up with a new app, or mm. you're, or whether you're working for the mobile uh, or uh, or console market, uh, is it vital to have a uh, a publisher? Yeah, so we're so we're kind of transitioning away from the traditional console market now to digital distribution settings, right? And uh, the question is. Can we go it alone as an independent uh, developer? Uh, and I would say uh, not necessarily so, no. Um, right, because in these digital distribution settings, there is tremendous competition. You would see maybe a thousand video games on a mature console, home console, but you'll see over 200,000 video games on an iOS store. Mm -hmm. um, 
And in order to be discovered by a consumer, um, you need to have a lot of exposure and you need to have um, marketing power behind that, you need to have the dollars behind that, you need to have uh, relationships with, say for example, media that are reviewing your product, but also platforms that may be able to promote your product onto the platform. Um, and this is just something that not a lot of independent video game developers are capable of doing because they're great people uh, in terms of making video games, but not necessarily in terms of commercializing them. And so there's still, even though it's, you're able to enter those digital plat platforms yourselves, uh, it's not necessarily a given that you'll be successful on them. And that's where uh, publishers can add a lot of value. On, on the console side, how, what is the embedded base uh, con from a console perspective right now? Uh, in terms of last generation and current generation. Right, so um, what you'll see is um, because those platforms are younger, you'll see that there is way fewer users on those platforms sure. at this moment, right? So you have an install base of about 170 million on the, the prior gen, so PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, and there's about... And, and the Wii is included in that as well? Uh, no, it's even higher when you add the Wii to that. I think it's about... 270 million when you add the Wii to it. Worldwide. Uh, worldwide, yeah, worldwide numbers. And you will have a, an 18 million-ish user base on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One combined. Mm -hmm. But those 18 million users that are on those platforms momentarily mm -hmm. are very eager to buy a lot of video games and to try out a lot of new things. So it's a very valuable user base. Um, does that make sense? It, uh, absolutely, it, 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 make, it makes total sense. How have you seen digital um, uh, growth in digital, both on the mobile side and then in you know, downloadable content, additional content. That's, uh, how, how has that impacted the industry in the, in the time that you've been studying? And is that the single biggest change that you've seen since you've been uh, doing deep dives into this industry? Yeah, okay. Well, so it's, it's funny that you asked that because my first steps into the industry was helping transition a traditional boxed uh, product yeah. video game developer into a digital distribution setting. And so I really... I really experienced it from up front. Um, and it's a huge change, right? For, for reasons that we already mentioned before, there is a lot more competition, there's a lot more freedom. You can, you can enter these platforms way more easy than, than for example, uh, uh, you know, a PlayStation 3. So there's a lot more possibilities. But at the same time, it's gotten a lot harder to be successful commercially just because you're faced with this really large um, base of games that you're competing with. Sure. Um, right, so there is there is increased opportunity for creativity, um, but it's gotten more challenging to become successful. Interesting. Let's uh, let's wrap it up with with one last question. Looking into the crystal ball of the future, what do you think is going to be the single most impactful technology uh, to to take place in, in in video games going forward? Wow, that's a really challenging question. I'm not a fortune teller. Um, <laughs> I'm excited about Oculus Rift. Yeah. I think it's changing, uh, it's changing the nature of video game development and it's also changing the nature of video game consumption. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a new platform. So I'm really excited to see what kind of changes that's going to bring about in the video game industry. And Morpheus as well, just the, the whole... Uh, yeah, the whole uh, goggle, goggle gaming, oh. virtual reality uh, <laughs> movement. Yeah. Right. Well, terrific. Thank you for taking the time, Joost. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, Professor Joost Reichfeld of uh, NYU. Thank you. Thanks.